What's going on guys? My name is Wes and I'm back with another review, also with Indy. And this time we're talking about these tough mother, the Noble Trainers. Now, if you've been working out for the longest time, you already know this, but if you're getting into working out, then you should know that you want something with very minimal sole because it's all about the transfer of force from your foot to the shoe to the floor when you're working with heavy weights. Why? Because if you use something with a lot of cushion, like I see some of you in there with your Air Maxes and your Adidas Boost, you're really going to sacrifice your stability. There's going to be a weird transfer of force when you're squatting and you're asking for nothing but injuries. So you want to use something with minimal sole. For the longest time, Chuck Taylors were and still are a go-to. The problem with them has always been durability. They're cheap shoes. I think I used to get them for like 40 bucks and I used to buy them one, two at a time. And I've got a wide foot. My foot would protrude off the sides. Now, if you're a complete badass and you're maybe a baller like uh, Hafthor Bjornsson, he's always wearing Jordan 1s, which are a derivative and a close cousin to the Chuck Taylor. Now, if you want to, you can absolutely use Jordan 1s. I mean, they have a minimalist sole, so there's not much cushion there. It's just my problem with Jordan 1s is price. I don't want to screw these up. Again, they're not made really any more for the lateral movements. I mean, this was at one time a basketball shoe. Like, the, these aren't meant to be used in the way that they were used in the past. They're basically for fashion. So you're gonna run into the durability problems that you do with the Chuck Taylors. So, where does that leave us? Well, within the market of cross-training, lifting shoes, you have your Nikes, which would be your Nike Metcons, absolute behemoth in the industry. And then you get your Reebok Nanos, which are wonderful shoes. I've had both. And the Nike Metcons were fantastic shoes, but they weren't durable for the price. I think these were about $130. I loved them. I have wide feet, so they felt great. These things hold odor and sweat. Terrible. And then the sole. I mean, it wore out super quick. I mean, the tread and everything, and I started slipping, and I was just like fed up. I couldn't find anything durable, wouldn't hold my sweat, and wouldn't hold odor and would last for a long time. So where's that leave us? These babies. Got the all black and then you got the gray with the lilac laces. Okay, what is it that makes them a different kind of brand? And now I'm talking months ago since I've had these. And if you look at it, I've had these for just about the same time period. And these shoes look damn near brand new. And the tread in the bottom is great. So again, like this is specific to this type of training shoe with the super fabric. They've got other shoes that they've come out most recently with knit runners. They've got this ripstop kind of material. I just wanted 100% focus on the super fabric based on the research that I've done. Okay, so hold on. Before we get any more into the trainers, I'm going to take a step back and talk about Noble for a second. So Noble started in 2015 by a couple of ex-Reebok executives. One was named Marcus Wilson, the head of brand strategy, and the other one was Michael Schaefer, who was a creative director for Reebok. So these two gentlemen left Reebok with the intent to do some sort of consulting business, but they also wanted to build something on the side. Eventually, the shoe company that they created started taking off. Their intent was to create very minimalist, no gimmicky, no frills kind of product, just absolutely no bull shit. Drop it. Noble. And that's what they did. When you look at the early iterations of the Noble shoes and the ones that I prefer, there's absolutely nothing gimmicky about them. Now, functionally, that's still the case, but they've come out since then with a lot of different prints and flowers and stars and stripes. You know, not for me personally, but at their core, they're still the same minimalist shoe. So when we jump back to the technology of the shoe, which I think they hit an absolute home run, they're able to reach out to a different company. So there's actually two companies at play here. There's Noble, who actually creates and manufactures the shoe. And then there's Higher Dimension Materials, who are the ones that license super fabric name and products for them to use. Now, Higher Dimension Materials is a separate company that has quite a portfolio of intellectual property with a lot of durable material. So one thing I like to do as well is I wanted to go more in depth and see what kind of company I'm buying from. I see that they're headquartered right now in Boston, Massachusetts, and they're around the 4950 employee mark right now. Perhaps this is old information since they've opened stores since I think it was reported, and they're anywhere from 12 to $36 million in annual revenue. That makes them a teeny tiny baby in the shoe market. So important note is that there's nothing about this shoe that makes it limited 
to cross training and just CrossFit in general. This can be a bodybuilding shoe. This can be just any sort of versatile lifting shoe for anyone out there. What I believe is happening is that the experience that the two gentlemen, plus their additional partner, Ben Bergeron, who is a well-known name in the CrossFit community, was able for them to specifically target a very progressive lifting market. Bodybuilding in general and other type of lifting has a very old school mentality and they can be stuck in their ways a bit. When a new player comes into market, may not be as accepted as someone else that's well known. And when you specifically target a market, you're able to penetrate it and focus your funding. Because I can tell you right now, I highly doubt that Noble is making any sort of profit this year or for the foreseeable future because this is a very, very tough industry to break into as a new player. So it takes a lot of lot of reinvesting revenue and building up. And if you, you try to blanket the market without a specific customer, you are going to fail. So being able to target the CrossFit community was a, a brilliant marketing strategy and growth strategy for a company like Noble. But if you're not specifically within the CrossFit community or you're not near a store or you haven't been targeted, and specifically looking for something like this, you may not know about Noble. So this gives you an introduction to who they are and why their shoes are so badass. So back to the shoe. There isn't much to this shoe. I mean, it's a very comfortable shoe for what it is. It's gonna get you through short to medium runs. I wouldn't go more than 800 meters, maybe a mile in this shoe if you absolutely have to, and there's some other movements that you need to do, but it's, it's just not, a running shoe. It's a lifting shoe. So you do have a minimalist sole. I apologize, it, like it, I don't know too much about the tread that they have at the bottom of the shoe. Looks pretty standard. It's wearing pretty damn well. I only use this going to and from the gym. I ride my bike to the gym because it's only a mile away here in South Beach. But I did the same for the Nike shoe and the tread on this absolutely wore down way too fast. But the main focus here is going to be the upper, which is made out of the super fabric that I mentioned earlier by Higher Dimension Materials. What's great about this super fabric is that it's very quick drying and it's breathable. So you have a very sturdy, stiff, and somewhat thick material that isn't gonna hold odor, but from my experience, it's they're quick drying, they don't hold sweat, so that's a plus. And because it's breathable, it's going to help you get through some workouts. So that really is the crux of what makes the Noble shoe different. But what Noble has done is turn it into a damn good product. They've got a simple name. They've got a simple mission. As long as they stick to that mission, I think they're going to be pretty good. Another thing about this super fabric is that it's abrasion and slash resistant. Now I didn't say puncture resistant, I said slash and abrasion resistant, which for someone that's gonna throw these in a bag and it's gonna hit other stuff, it's gonna rub against everything, you're using it at the gym, it's gonna hit things, it's gonna help it last longer. There's no loose threads. One thing people have complained is that the dots on here perhaps have fallen off. I haven't experienced that. My shoes, looking at it, I mean, they, they still look damn new. So let's recap. So I'm going to say three reasons to buy, three reasons to not to buy. Number one, durability. The shoes still look brand new. I've used them through I don't know how many workouts. And at the same time when I rotated them with my Nikes, the Nikes just ran out of steam and the Nobles have kept going. What helps the durability is the abrasion and slash resistant and it's going to keep your shoes lasting much longer. Number two is going to be the breathability. Again, I sweat a ton and when I'm really pushing through workouts, I can't have one, my shoes smelling bad, and two, I don't want to add any weight to my feet during a workout. This may not be something that you think about, but if you're doing a workout where you're constantly moving, the ounces can add up pretty quickly. And it's something to think about when you're also looking at running shoes. And number three is kind of a joint thing. I love that I love their brand strategy and I love that they're a small business right now because I've mentioned this in another video. In 2020, I decided not to put my money towards the bigger name brands. Again, not because I don't like them, just because there's so many of these awesome up and coming brands to venture out to and check out. So why limit yourself? It gives me 
a good sense that I see own, the owners out there really hustling and building up a company. All right, three reasons maybe not to buy. Some people have worried about the quality. May not be the best. I haven't experienced it. I've seen reviews all over the place. Like I mentioned earlier, the dots on it may fall off. So the reviews as far as customer service and quality have kind of been all over the place. Number two, maybe it's the price. These aren't in a position right now to have a lower price. When you look at the bigger brands, something you have to think about is that they're able to order these massive quantities of material, which is gonna bring down the cost and allows them to make their margin and also perhaps pass on the cost to the customers. You can't really compare that to a what I would consider a startup since they're barely five years old. Maybe they'll get there at one point. I hope they don't sacrifice the quality for a lower price point or maybe they just never will and they'll stick to it. So price has to be where it's at. Again, no publicly available information, so I don't know their margins on this shoe, but I can't imagine being that great. And like I said earlier, I highly doubt they're making a profit now or anytime in the near future. And the last one, number three is availability. One thing that turned me off about not getting this shoe was because of my weird size feet. I've got, I've got flippers. I wear about a 4E as far as my shoe width. So I'm very hesitant not to get shoes that I can't actually try on. The fact that they have a Miami store here was so awesome because I was able to go there and I actually had to go. I wear about a 12 to 13, depending on the shoe. I wear a 12 and a half in this. My wide foot actually fits very well in the toe box. Um, the toe box appears to be a little bit wider from what I've seen people say. So that kind of helps me out, but may hurt other people. I guess that can be like a, a half check mark negative, but lack of availability to people may be an issue if you need to try them out. And if you're not someone that wants to order multiple sizes, try one on and ship it back, I hate doing that, so I don't blame you. So that wraps it up. Just wanted to share this. Uh, just wanted to share, I'm not a <laughs> employee of Noble. Noble doesn't give me any money. I just like to find products that I like and put a lot of research into before I make a purchase, use my background in business and law to kind of give you a different perspective and hopefully give you some information that will help you in your buying process. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it. If you like, comment, subscribe would be absolutely awesome. I'm trying to grow the channel and that allows me to, you know, kind of <laughs> motivate me to create more similar ones. This is a fun hobby of mine. If there's any products or businesses or anything you'd like for me to look into, you can leave it in the comments. So I appreciate you watching and thank you. Go do something awesome. Oh, Peace. Yeah.